315 Clan Crusaders would leave the factory in Washington Newtown by 1973, and this was one of them. It would meet an untimely and somewhat mysterious end at some point after that being partially restored and reshelled into this later Irish clan body shell. What this car desperately needed at that point was somebody to come and rescue it who was up for a challenge. Here's the thing though, Lance Davidson, who did rescue this car, had an altogether very different challenge in mind. An electronics engineer, Lance was looking for a donor car for an electric classic car project he had in mind. And having owned a couple of clans back in the early 80s, he knew that the layout of the car would suit the EV drivetrain and that there would be plenty of options for weight distribution of the batteries. It was important to Lance that the donor car wasn't plucked from the healthy clan population, so instead he looked for something that was so far gone that even a reasonable restoration back to somewhere near original spec would have been a formidable proposition. The plan was to build from scratch an electric classic car so advanced it would rival a modern EV for technology, comfort, convenience and economics, whilst at the same time retaining the spirit of the original car. The result, of course, will divide opinion. But mark my words, it will stop you in your tracks. A lot of effort has gone into sourcing and fabricating replacement trim in here to make it look and feel as much like the original car as possible, but you are immediately aware of the collision in space and time and technology that is fused together at the heart of this machine. Not least because the dash display looking back at you is inspired by the DeLorean time machine from Back to the Future. No, really. Incidentally, the technology required to create this Back to the Future dashboard effect was actually available in 1973. But you'll need to set the date and time for somewhere in the region of 2023 once you start to look closer. Heated and ventilated seats, disc brakes, LED lighting, reversing camera, central locking and a DAB digital radio fit the brief of a car designed to be used every day. But it's the real world updates that make this clan so impressive. A 250 mile range and the ability to plug into most public and home chargers make this arguably comparable to any EV that you could drive off the forecourt. But for a project build that had convenience and economy at its heart, it's not been plain sailing for Lance to this point. The Nissan LEAF EM57 motor here is limited to its original power output of 37 kilowatt or 50 brake horsepower. The battery is a 144 AH 360 volt 52 kWh. Are you keeping up? It's split between the nose, the cabin and the boot for weight distribution. Lance designed the car's tech from scratch, work that would take a car manufacturer any number of years with a team of around 50 people. The power inverter, instrumentation and battery management systems were designed and built by Lance himself, with one of his sons assisting with the car's software. The level of testing and development that have gone into making this car as drivable as possible in a modern EV sense is astonishing. For example, the magnets on the motor in theory limit the car to 50 miles per hour, so, a magnetic field had to be injected, that's a thing, apparently, in order to weaken the magnets and let the motor rev higher. It's a complicated process though, and if that electromagnetic field weakening were to be lost at speed, the motor would generate extremely high voltage and the results could be quite catastrophic. Every type of throttle input has had to have a unique mapping to account for different speeds, loads and regenerations. And I'm told that while there are some protections built in for wrong inputs, these haven't been fully tested yet. It's like driving an experimental rocket. There's no doubting 
that a traditional restoration would have been more straightforward and that there would have been a more simple solution to converting the clamp to battery power. But the best car builders will tell you that they enjoy the challenge of pushing the boundaries and creating something new and exciting more than they enjoy the finished article. Indeed, that's why they often move on from one project to the next, looking for a new challenge. With someone like Lance Davidson, you do have to take a deep breath before contemplating what on earth that next challenge might look like, particularly when there's a submarine and a Triumph TR7 in the garage. What you'd really like to know, I'm sure, is does this clan, with all of its technology, compare in the slightest behind the wheel here to my 1972 Brown Clan Crusader in the garage with its Hillman imp engine? Well, apart from the additional 100 kilograms for the battery, which has been compensated to a degree for by adjustable shocks and spring platforms, it feels a bit heavier, but it behaves like a clan. Obviously you haven't got the noise and that's quite disconcerting. You want to be changing up all the time, but dynamics wise, it's really impressive. And I know there are people out there who say, no, it's a classic car, it should have all of the theater that the original car had. What it's lost in noise and smell and oil, it's made up for theater of a very different kind. You need to stop thinking of this as a Clan Crusader which has been converted to EV. You need to start thinking of it as a Clan Crusader which had driven its final miles, but has been saved in the name of science, reborn in the future as a technologically more advanced version of its original self. You need to think of this as Robocop. But this Clan Crusader is not here to save the day. It's here to start the conversation. You first. <laughs>